Welcome back to my Mud Blazer tutorial on buttons and boxes. So the button stuff is actually pretty easy. And in fact, let's not beat around the bush of how easy this is going to be. Uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. If I go on to the website here. Basically, you go to the buttons and then you just copy paste the buttons into them. See that? By the way, this is just the uh, the project that was generated by Mudblazer itself. There's not really much to it. And if you don't know what I did or how to do it or you want to do it yourself, I urge you to look at my first video of the uh, Mudblazer series. So I'm just going to show you what I just did, which is copy paste from the website itself, put it on this project, and we're going to run. Obviously, it's not going to run. And boom, we have a button. So instead of just me uh, doing that saying done, let's just go over what's actually happening here. So what my blazer has when it comes to buttons, at least in this case for simple buttons, we have something called variance, which is what changes um, the uh, the style of this. And then the color also changes, obviously, the color, along with whether or not it's disabled or enabled. So just like any other button thing, um, if you were using Bootstrap, it's kind of similar, except that... Uh, you will be using either the bootstrap classes or you will be using um, style classes or the actual HTML. When you want to disable something, you'd use the disabled attribute within here, where in here there's parameters instead taking its place. So just remember that. So that's the main difference between this and, and any other library you'll probably work with is the fact that because these are components, you have to work with them as you would work components. And if you do not understand how components work, at a fundamental level, at least at a basic level, I suggest you go, you know, figure that out. And if you don't know how to do that, then I also suggest looking at my components basics uh, video. So because I'm not going to go over how to, you know, components work and stuff like that. I'm just going to tell you what is expected, which are these parameters here. The most important ones being the variant of the style that we're using and also whether the primary or whatever uh, um, the colors are and whether it's disabled or enabled. That's usually what buttons are. So there are actually different types of buttons here. And of course, I could always copy paste this and show you what happens. Oops, this is the dialog button. I don't need that right now. But I'm just going to explain to you things that, you know, at first glance, you might be confused as. Now, these are button floating action buttons. If you don't know what these are, they're this. This button right here, that's a floating action button. So if I would have to open up like an Android or something to show you. But this is a really good example of it. These are what you would use if you need it to be the primary button in front of an app. Like if you're having some application or if you have some website and you, for whatever reason, you need a button that's right in front of the content. You want something like this because it gives it like a shadow. So it looks, you know, uh, that it's supposed to be away from everything else. And it's the primary thing a person will look at for functions. So here's another example, which is the Google Maps, um, you know, having the... Uh, the route and I think this is like the zoom or pinpoint thing, but that's all the button fab is. And to implement that is just you use a different component instead called the mud fab. So again, this will look like that. If I copy pasted this, all you will be seeing is this in there. So if I just did that, no, I'll do it anyway, just to say that I, that I did, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm just putting it right in the index. I'm not going to spend too much time on these buttons because honestly, there's not much of a point in me showing you how to copy paste buttons. I will go over some of the stuff that it works here. So it, they do give you icons in case you don't know. Um, uh, Mudblazer gives you access to some icons through uh, natively and, or you could use font awesome icons as well. So if I went to the icon button. Here we go. If I went to the icon button and you wanted to use font awesome, you can. The difference is that this is another different component called mud icon button. And the main difference is that now there is an icon parameter that you have to use either the class for the font awesome, as long as you have access to the style sheet, or you could use the icons from its icon page, which you could check out real easy. I like mud blazer because of, of this, what I'm showing you now, like I don't have to do so much work to uh, do uh, a lot of, um, you know, research into how to use it. 
because it's all right there basically it's at least for these very very simple things now when we get into the boxes things are going to change but for now it's actually pretty uh pretty self-explanatory and there's not really much to go over except the fact that these are all different com uh, components so we have the mud icon component when it came for, for the button it was the mud button uh component and when it came for the button fab it was the mud fab component so you could also group your buttons here in case you ever want to have buttons that are close together either vertically or uh horizontally you could do that as well so if you ever have a case like let's say you want to add these to a grid and you want buttons in there that are close together which were cases that i had to work with a, a few times you would have to either do that yourself and figure out all the css tricks you'd have to do so even though this looks pretty simple it's actually a really nice time saver um overall so i suggest that if you have a case like that where you need to buttons to get close by maybe within a small cell then i would use the mud button group it also allows you to change the through the, the same parameters that the normal buttons have, um, you know, with color and variant and stuff like that. It allows you to have a uniform style between them and also gives you access to icons as well. If you decide to use mud icon button or the mod toggle button, which I'll go right here. This is the last uh, button type. So this is probably the more um, in-depth one because you're actually having an event that gets uh, the button toggle as uh, a binding to some variable or whatever. All this is going to do is this. And then you choose the two icons that you want to switch it to whatever the icon that you start off with. And then when the uh, when this is toggled, it turns to the other icon. So again, this is one of those things where I, uh, if you wanted to have this working like this inside your own program, you would have to build this out either through JS or through other stuff. I believe Bootstrap, I don't know, if, I don't remember if Bootstrap actually has something like this within it, but I do know that there has been many times where I personally had to have built this from scratch or using the library available to me. So it is also nice to know that you have something like this, except it's also, again, its own component. So that's going to be a theme coming through here. So yeah, that's all there is to it. And don't worry, it doesn't seem that you're limited to just using components. You could use HTML in there. But just know if you have anything like a button that you want to add some binding to, you will have to use your Blazor components instead of the normal base, uh, Blazor ones that you're used to. So that's all there really is for these buttons. Um, I'm not going to spend much more time on this. We'll go into the harder stuff now, being the boxes. The boxes actually are a little bit more, uh, they're much more intense than, than these buttons are. So, you know, just, just hold on a second. The next thing we're going to talk about are alerts. Alerts are just as easy as buttons, except they don't have as many variations to them. In fact, there are two variants of alerts. The first one is going to be the variant that you're going to see that has no, uh, that only pops out and has no real functions um, or any event bound to it or any events, functions, whatever it is. They have nothing bound to it. They're just there for show. You're going to see what I mean when I run it. See, this doesn't do anything. I have to be the one to uh, implement the logic that says whether or not I'm going to hide it or whatever. Then you have the other variety of alert uh, when it comes to mud alert components specifically because there is this another kind of alert, but we'll get to that later, which is that you can use this to actually have an event in there. Or when you have the show, uh, when you have the close icon click button, you can pass in a function and then that function can do something that will handle all the, you know, hiding and all that stuff if you choose so choose to do so. This is an example that's on mud blazer right now. If you want to look at that so but this all it's going to do is that when this is clicked it's going to pass in this value close me with true and then it's going to change this to false and hide this because the component's going to refresh and then it's going to see that this is false hiding the alert giving you the illusion that you can uh, that this component had the control over it but all it did was change a boolean that you set up all the logic beforehand to make it work so in other words, that's it. That's all it does. So you can make it do whatever you want. You can add events to it or stuff like that through the uh, the functions. Um, and this allows you to change the, whether or not you have access to that X button. So when the X button gets clicked, you can do something with it. And that's all there is to alerts. Alerts are not that hard, at least not this variation. There. Now we're going to get into the harder variations of alerts 
Uh, there's one called the snack bar, which I think is probably the better one to use because it's a lot nicer to look at and it's probably what you're used to when it comes to alerts. These are directly on the page, but these other ones are a little bit different and we're going to get into the interfaces that are required or the services, should I say, that are required in order to run them. So that's why the actual other boxes that I'm going to talk about now are more complicated than these other two, the buttons and this kind of alert.